afternoon folks um, I promised once I got this tractor the e-hydro specifically figured out that I would do a user explanation of the functions and how this thing works um, and that's what we're going to cover today Let's start out with the transmission. A, uh, A neutral, B, and C. Um, C range is very, it's a very tall gear. Uh, I, I don't see myself ever doing anything other than running up and down the road in it. Um, I don't think it's got enough torque to really do any kind of work even though the manual says light mowing and stuff like that uh b range b range is pretty much i guess i would consider that about where a range was on my 2038 um it's actually suitable for pretty much anything you're gonna you're gonna do uh it has a top speed of eight um, and it is suitable for most any task you're ever gonna do um, but you might hear a little bit of transmission whine if you're really working it hard but you get down here to a range and I've come to like a range uh, I've come to like that one a lot for certain tasks um, it's, it's a true like a granny gear um, and it gives you all of the available torque that this engine has to offer which on the 3039 is right around 95 foot pounds of torque um, between like 1600 and 2000 RPMs so that that I've come to like a range an awful lot for certain things uh, where speed isn't really an issue now let's talk about let me get the steering wheel out of my way let's talk about these forward pedals I have made a comment here and there that you can't feel the load now you all know with a standard hydrostatic transmission say you're pulling a real steep grade uh, you know you you feel it there's actual tension on the pedals um, these pedals they never ever there's no more tension than that ever on these pedals these pedals simply run uh there's a potentiometer rotary position sensor whatever you want to call it on these pedals and all these pedals do is send a signal to another sensor on the transmission that hey this guy wants to go faster or this guy wants to go slower no actual mechanical linkage between these pedals and the transmission and that's how they work and that's why I have commented a couple of times that you can't feel the load with these pedals because you you just won't feel it in the pedal. You have to pay more attention, listen to the engine, watch the tachometer, whatever your method is, that's how you have to do it. Now, let's get on to more of this stuff that this e-hydro has to offer now over here is the control panel for most of the e-hydro uh, you have your motion match which you can adjust how much this thing rolls out before it comes to a stop um, I've settled in right around here which rolls me out let me try a demonstration so foots off the pedal 
so that rolls me out a couple of feet now that's B range um, and it does I think it it matters a little bit by your speed you're going um, a range I've noticed when I'm only doing two miles per hour it might not roll out quite as much but that works forward and reverse and you can go straight from one pedal to the other it'll roll out wherever you have that set and then it'll pick you up in reverse or forward uh, similar to the power reverser um, but I've settled in on right around there and if I'm doing front end loader work I might move it over a little bit all the way to the shortest is a very uh, quick stop not I wouldn't call it a, abrupt um, you're not gonna skid the tires but so let's continue uh, I promised I'd try to keep this short so this is auto throttle now it's off now it's on and by now most everybody knows what auto throttle is it's available all the way down to the one series though uh, on the smaller tractors I think it is a mechanical a cable linkage um, but basically you step on the pedal and it increases your engine RPMs to match where you got your pedal that one actually is very simple uh, speed match it's on now it's off um, so if I were brush hogging a small field and I this is just one scenario that I've come up with in my mind I could set my max speed at say three miles per hour but yet when I get to the end of the row it still gives me the ability to slow down turn around and then go back now again I've said this a few times the manual is not very clear I'm going to include a few uh, pictures from the manual because speed match does not work with auto throttle engaged or it doesn't on this one uh, but it's simple so if you wanted to use speed match you would get to you know go to your speed you want to go push that push that set on your cruise control now I can stop but now no matter how hard I push the pedal I'm still only going the one well 1.1 1.2 that I set it at uh, that's, a, that's a pretty unique feature like I say I have tried to come up with scenarios for that um, well yeah I got my auto throttle off so I'm just idling back here so that's that's alright for certain things I could see myself using that down the road uh, and then you have load match now I can't do a demonstration of load match right here but load match has become my favorite feature um, because what load match does how it works is there's a sensor on the engine and there's a sensor on the transmission as soon as the sensor on the engine senses that you have uh, too much engine load to maintain your engine speed it will send a signal back to the transmission and slow you down to allow you to maintain that uh, what I have been pleasantly surprised with is the response time is far quicker than it is for a user or for me anyway when I was running my 2038 or 2025 you know you run into a heavy spot oh you know you sense it you hear it you see your PTO RPMs decrease 
and you let off of your forward pedal and allow it to catch up the response time from load match is very very fast like i think i might lose 10 pto rpms and i'm already slowing down and then the pto rpms are right back where they're supposed to be um that is a really really nice feature now you have your automotive cruise there's on there's off set decrease resume and, and increase um i like that a lot too i i like the ability to be able to change it on the fly because you know getting it set to say i'm brush hogging and i want to do three and a half getting it set exactly to three and a half is well it's a challenge um, it might be three or it might be a little over three and a half and that gives you the ability to tune that in as you're as you're going now let me explain a, a quick problem that i had with this tractor uh, because it dawned on me that there might be people out there that have just accepted this for normal and it's not my forward pedal ever since i got this tractor was uh very jerky like in in a range i would push 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 the pedal it wouldn't engage until i got to about two or two and a half tenths of a mile per hour but then once i was moving anything below a half a mile per hour and it would start sometimes it would stop and then start going again and then stop and for normal tractor operation that might not have been a problem but when you try to change out front end loader attachments and that creates issues so Casanova equipment which is my dealer uh, they came they sent a tech up the first step according to John Deere was to recalibrate or run a calibration sequence and the tech came up and did that there was no change to the tractor so at that point John Deere I guess kind of said well it's close enough um, but my dealer you know they didn't accept that so they came up put a new <coughs> a new potentiometer on it and there was still no change so the technician plugged his laptop in and ran some diagnostics and realized that the voltage readings weren't the same or I'm not going to get real technical into what he did, what he found, but he knew it wasn't right <coughs> and he knew that he has the ability to adjust those through the computer. But he didn't know where to go on this tractor in the computer to do it. So he went back and reached out to John Deere and they gave him the sequences, whatever he needed to do, they gave it to him and he came back up the next morning and adjusted it and called me and said, I think you're gonna be very happy, which I am. Uh, but I having a good dealer is priceless um having a great dealer like mine is beyond words so now for any of you out there that have a tractor with e-hydro that it does this there is a DTAC with a solution for, from John Deere and that lists off everything that he had to do to make this right now the only reason they didn't find it when they first started looking was there they think anyway is because this tractor so new that my serial number break didn't fall didn't wasn't listed on the DTAC so just 
for any of you out there that have had one, two, three, four, five years old and it acts like that, it's not normal and there is a fix. Um, so just keep that in mind and go see your dealer and ask them to search for the DTAC on whatever tractor you have, e-hydro. So, uh, I promised I'd get this video out. <clears throat> this is just strictly from a user standpoint. I'm not trying to give you all the technicalities of how everything is and how it works. But this is what I've discovered and this is what I really enjoy about this tractor. I love this tractor more every time I use it now. Uh, it's just absolutely wonderful. So, thanks for watching, and I will catch you in a, another video soon.